Okay, in this class we study a multi-period binomial tree model for option pricing, but before that let me start with some background. So our interest is to find the theoretical prices implied by the no-arbitrage pricing theory of call options and put options, and our setting is that the underlying asset, let's say the stock of company X, can have several possible states for the future. So most textbooks teach you the binomial model, which has two possible states, up or down, or good or bad. And besides company X's stock, there is also a risk-free asset, and these two assets can be used for hedging or replication. So there are two states and two assets. And in this setting, any call options and put options can be priced using these two assets. When I explained the theory, I explained with the three state, three asset example. So there were three states, three possible states for the underlying asset stock X, and we had three assets that can be used for replication and hedging. Stock X, risk-free asset, and some call option of company X in stock. And given these, we priced some other call options and put options. And the last exercise was the four state, four asset example. So there were four possible states for the underlying asset, stock X. And there were four assets that could be used for replication. And given this setting, we priced other call options and put options. In general, if there are n possible states for the future, then we need n assets currently traded to apply the no arbitrage pricing theory. In this picture, there are 8 possible states for the future, which is 3 weeks from today. But in general, the farther future we consider, the more possibilities there should be. So if we consider something like 3 months period or 6 months period, then there can be 20 possibilities for the state of stock X in such a far future, even in a rough approximation of the reality. But there aren't 20 different assets that can be used for application or hedging. So we've got a problem. Well, the point of today's class is that theoretically, two assets are good enough to apply the no arbitrage pricing theory as long as these assets can be traded sufficiently frequently. Just two assets is good enough. How can it be possible? Suppose there are only two assets currently traded in the market, stock X and the risk-free bond that matures in three-week period. Suppose you want to replicate a call option, or equivalently, you want to know the theoretical price of the call option. I haven't explained this yet. I explained this with a fruits basket example, but I haven't explained this with asset example. But it turns out that the theoretical price of a call option or put option is equal to the cost to replicate that option with some other assets. But anyway, suppose that in three weeks period, there are lots of possible states. Let's say there are eight possible states. No problem. Suppose that assets can be traded more frequently than just today and in three weeks. Suppose that these two assets, StockX and Risk-Free Bond, can be traded once a week. And every week, there are only two possibilities, up or down. In one week period, the stock price can go up or go down. And in the next week, again, the stock price can go up or go down. Note that it is still the case that there are eight possible states in three week period. But now, assets can be traded so frequently that in each period, there are only two possible states for the stock price, going up or going down. Again, the basic idea is that 
assuming only two possible states is not too rough an approximation if it is a very near future, like one week or one day or even one hour. Such a model is called the binomial tree model. To get an idea of how the binomial tree model works, let's solve one exercise. The next exercise consists of three parts, one, two, three. The first two parts are just preparation for the last part, and the last part is the binomial tree model. With two periods. Once you understand the binomial tree with two periods, then that with three periods, five periods, the idea is the same. OK, part one. There are two possible states for 1st of December. State A, the share price is 190 pounds. The value of the risk-free asset is 121 pounds. State B, the share price is 115 pounds and the risk-free asset has the same value as in state A. Assume that today is 1st of November and the current prices of the share and the risk-free asset are 140 and 110 respectively. Find the no arbitrage price for the call option on the share with strike price 100 and expiration date 1st of December. This question is actually easier than the exercise we solved in the previous class because there are only two states. In the previous exercise, we had four possible states. So this question is much easier. The right approach is to find theoretical state prices. So denote the state prices by PA and PB respectively. Then the share price implies the first equation. In state A, the share price will be 190. In state B, the share price will be 115, and the current share price is 140. So this is the equation that the share price implies. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back to the previous two or three classes. The risk-free asset implies that 121 PA plus 121 PB equal the current price of the risk-free asset 110. If you solve this system of equations, the state price for state A is 47.3 pence, and the state price for state B is 43.6 pence. Now what is the theoretical price of the call option of this share? The strike price is 100, so this call option's value will be 90 in state A and 15 in state B. And therefore, this call option's value should be 90 times PA plus 15 times PB equal 49 pounds 9 pence. Okay? Part 2 is almost the same question with different numbers. There are two possible states for 1st of December, state X and state Y. The share price will be either 115 or 70, depending on the state. The value of the risk-free asset is always 121 pounds. That's fine. Assume that today is 1st of November and the current prices of the share and the risk-free asset are 85 and 110 respectively. Find the no arbitrage price for the call option on the share with the strike price 100 and expiration date 1st of December. Same idea, right? We want to find the state prices for state X and state Y. So denote them by Px and Py. Then the share implies 115 times Px plus 70 times Py equal the current share price 85. The risk-free asset implies that 121 times Px plus 121 times Py equal the current price 110. If you solve it, Px equal 0.475, Py equal 
this code option's value will be 15 in state x and 0 in state y, and therefore the theoretical price of the code option is 15 times px equal 7.12 pounds. Part 3. Now let's assume today is 1st of October and the current prices of the share and the risk-free asset are both 100 pounds. Consider the two-period model as described on the right, where there are two possible states on 1st of November. So on the 1st of November, the share price will be either 140 or 85. The value of the risk-free asset is always 110. For the next month, from November to December, again the share price will either go up or go down. The value of the risk-free asset is £121 for sure on 1st of December. The share price is either 190 or 115 or 70 depending on the state. Using the results from part 1 and 2, find the no arbitrage price for the call option with strike price £100 and the expiration date 1st of December. Find today's price of the call option and today's 1st of October. On 1st of November, there are two possible states. Let's call these states state 1 and state 2. We can find the state prices. So let's denote the state prices for 1st of November by P1 and P2. Then the share prices imply 140 P1 plus 85 P2 equal 100. The risk-free asset implies that 110 times P1 plus 110 times P2 equal 100. So we can get P1 equal 0.413, P2 equal 0.496. The same approach, nothing changed. Now, what is the value of the call option on 1st of November? The strike price is 100. So you might think that the value of the call option on 1st of November is 40 in state 1 and 0 in state 2. But that's not the case. Because the expression date, the maturity date of this call option is not the 1st of November. It's 1st of December. So even if state 2 realizes on 1st of November, the value of this call option is not 0 because there is possibility that the share price goes up to 115 on 1st of December, in which case the value of this code option will be positive, not zero. Again, because the expiration date, the maturity date of the code option is not 1st of November but the 1st of December, the value of the code option on the 1st of November is not simply 40 in state 1 and 0 in state 2. It's more complicated than that. Then what's the value of this code option on 1st of November? Well, actually, we already computed them in part 1 and part 2. Part 1 considered only these three squares. Remember the setting. On the 1st of December, the share price will be either 190 or 150. And the value of the risk free asset is always 121. And the current share price is 140. And the current value of the risk free asset is 110. And that was the setting of part 1. And we priced the call option with strike price 100 and the expiration date December 1st. And we found that the value of the call option is 49.09 pounds. Okay? So we already know that if state 1 realizes on 1st of November, the value of the call option with strike price £100 and the expiration date 1st of December should be £49.09. Part 2 considered these three squares only. Remember the setting. The share price can be either 115 or 70 and the value of the risk-free asset is always 121. 
The current share price is 85 and the current value of the risk-free asset is 110. Yeah? So actually in part 2 we already computed the theoretical price of the call option with strike price 100 and the maturity date 1st of December if state 2 realizes on 1st of November. And that value is 7.12 pounds. So, from part 1 and part 2, we already know that the value of the call option should be 49.09 in state 1 and 7.12 in state 2. And therefore, on the 1st of October, the theoretical price of such a call option should be 49.06, excuse me, this should be 49.09, times P1 plus 7.12 times P2 equal 23.82 pounds. Okay? So generally, if your binomial tree model has more than one period, three periods or five periods or 100 periods, the general approach is to start from the end the maturity date of the call option or put option you want to price and go backward, period by period. And eventually you can find today's price of the option. 